Hey, welcome to The Journey Church. We are an online church for people everywhere. And this is part three in a, a three-part mini-series that we're doing here in Banff National Park. Uh, we've been here all week and we're exploring a really important question. What does God save you for? And then along the way, we're sharing this amazing, beautiful place with you. Make sure you hit subscribe and uh, like this video so you don't miss any of the other great lessons that we're gonna bring you from around North America. It's all about helping you see the world and learn more about following Jesus. That's really cool, it goes right under the stairs. Well, in the first episode, we took you to the top of an 8,000 foot tall mountain and we talked about what God saved you for. Then, in part two, we brought you with us down to the base of the mountains and really started to help you understand your purpose as a Christian. Well, this episode, the final one in this series, is all about remembering that purpose. I think God knew that his people would have a tendency to forget, so he gave them a divine hack to remember what matters most. And in order to teach you about that divine hack for remembering the important stuff, we're gonna introduce you to a tiny, teeny, itty bitty little creature that only lives in one place on the whole earth. Hey, welcome to the place they call Cave and Basin. This is the place in the region where the very first thermal hot springs were discovered. And we're gonna head in here and check it out. And what we learn in here is gonna lead us to learn about that crazy, teeny, tiny little animal that lives nowhere in the world but here. And I promise it's all gonna connect with the, a lesson and all the stuff that we're gonna unpack today. You're just gonna have to come along for the ride. Let's go check this place out. Hey, we are inside a cave uh, this is where it gets its name, Cave and Basin. And so this is the cave and behind me is the original thermal hot springs pool that Indians discovered uh, a long time ago in the late 1800s and then other explorers. I wish there was smell-o-vision because if you could smell how it smells in here, woo -wee, it's ripe. I think they call this the Cave of a Thousand Farts. Well, it turns out that this place, Cave and Basin, is also home to the world famous dun, 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 Banff Springs snail. And this happens to be one of two amazing snails that you're gonna learn about today. Trust me, I, all of this ties in to this divine hack that God gives us to help us remember what matters most. So you're gonna wanna stick around and see how this all plays out. Well, you might think that these tiny snails are just hanging out here in Banff National Park for the view, but it turns out they've got a really special talent. They actually can survive in some pretty extreme conditions. This place has very little oxygen, lots of dissolved minerals in the thermal water, and then there's unique bacteria, and these little guys are just amazing survivors. But even the toughest of creatures have their limits, right? It turns out that these snails aren't too fond of the colder temperatures. 
I can relate. Maybe that's the deal. I'm part snail. Well, researchers have noticed that when the seasons change and the temperatures drop here, the population of Banff spring snails starts to decline. But don't worry, as soon as the weather warms up, these little guys come back in full force, kind of like the tourists. Well, you may or may not know that Jesus was Jewish, and God gave all sorts of instructions to the Jewish people. Some of the things that I'm about to share with you were originally intended for Jews, and I just wanted to share up front with you that the goal is not for you to become Jewish. Far from it. God made it super clear that Jesus made a way for all people to come to him, and you don't have to become a Jew in order to be saved or to share in God's plans and purposes for his people. So one of the things that faithful Jews would do is pray a specific prayer two to three times a day. That prayer is called the Shema. It's kind of a funny word. But that prayer itself is made up of three different scriptures. One comes from Deuteronomy 6. Another chunk of that prayer comes from Deuteronomy 11. And the last part of the prayer comes from Numbers 15. It's certainly a prayer that Jesus would have prayed multiple times a day. And we'll do a deep dive and learn all about the Shema in another series. But today, I want to help keep us on track. Today is all about discovering this divine hack that God gave his people to help them remember the things that matter most and figure out uh, what in the world another snail has to do with any of this. So it's the third scripture that shows up in the Shema prayer that I really want to take a look at. It's the one from the Old Testament book called Numbers. So let's look at that one together real quick. It's in Numbers 15, starts off in verse 37. It says, Then the Lord God said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Throughout the generations to come, you must make tassels for the hems of your clothing and attach them with a blue cord. When you see the tassels, you will remember and obey the commands of the Lord instead of following your own desires and defiling yourselves as you're prone to do. The tassels will help you remember that you must obey all my commands and be holy to your God. Well, in the ancient world, they wore clothing that looked similar to what a lot of us in North America would call a robe. And they would tie these tassels to the bottom corners of their robes. And certainly over the years, fashion has changed a lot. And God's people have adapted the ways that they wear their tassels. Some now tie them on the corners of their prayer shawl. And others wear them uh, on their belt loops with two in the front and two in the back. Again, the goal uh, with me sharing this with you is not that you uh, obey the laws and instructions that were relevant to the Jews. It's really more about you learning the heart or intent behind God actually giving these instructions to his people to wear tassels. Like, why would he tell them to do this in the first place? These were uh, a tool that God instructed them to use to help them remember his commandments and to remember their identity. But I want to zero in on one thing in particular in that Numbers passage. There's this little obscure detail. I don't know if you caught it, but he said in there that uh, there is a, a piece of the tassel that's actually a blue cord. And I'm curious about that. I want to unpack that with you. What's the big deal? Why blue? Why specify one blue cord? Let's dig into that. So it turns out that blue is really not an easy color to make in the ancient world. Enter snail number two. I know, you've been dying to figure out, like, when in the world are we going to learn about another snail? I mean, two snails in one day. Life is good. Well, the dye to make the blue actually came from a snail called the Murex trunculus snail. Fun name. He lives in some shallow coastal waters along the Mediterranean. And the ancient Israelites would gather these snails and crush the shell to locate this gland on the back of the snail that held this unique dye. 
So it would take about 15 snails to create enough dye to make one cord and turn it blue. Now, if you've got four tassels to tie on the corners of your garment, you're looking at 60 snails. And so you can imagine this whole process is a bunch of work. And understanding this helps us see why blue was generally reserved for royalty because it was really hard to come by, which, by the way, is also how it got its name, Royal Blue. There's a little clue that might help you win Jeopardy someday. You're welcome. Well, knowing all of this doesn't really answer the question, uh, why does God want them to include one blue cord in their tassels? But in Exodus 28, uh, God is giving the details for the clothing that a high priest would wear, and blue was the dominant color. So blue is connected to priests. Now, if you watched the episode from last week, then you know that God saved his people from Egypt and, and instructed them that they were going to be for him a kingdom of priests. Now, if that sounds a little bit weird, I would really encourage you to go back and watch episode two in this series because we really broke all that down and explained it and uh, helped you understand what God had in mind when he said that he wanted his people to be a priest. So God wanted to make sure that Israel never forgot their identity, which is why he instructed them to wear these tassels. It's as if God was actually saying to them, listen, wear these tassels. Remember that those cords represent my instructions. And among those threads, there is this special blue cord. And remember that when you see that royal blue cord standing out, that it's a a reminder to you that you're to be my message and how you choose to live your life really matters. I, I don't know about you, but to me, this is crazy, right? God rescues a nation of slaves and then tells them that he wants to make them a whole kingdom of priests, one of the most coveted roles that they've ever known. But not just a few, like the, the most elite people that get the job, like they saw happen in Egypt, God is offering this amazing position, uh, the position that's the highest of honors to, to every single person. And it's the same offer that God continues to make to anyone today who will repent and commit to follow Jesus and keep his instructions. Well, if you want to keep learning the Bible and growing as a follower of Jesus, we have a great resource for you. And you can sign up for our free weekly guide service where we're going to send you useful tips and tools and training right to your inbox. Best of all, we break everything down in plain English so it's easy for you to understand and apply what you're learning. So if you're ready to get some help from a guide, click the link in the description below and keep growing. Hey, we also have a really great free gift for you today. If you sign up for the guide service this week, we're going to send you a free tassel along with some other cool surprises. So be sure to scroll down in the description below and find the first link and sign up to get your guide service going and delivered to your email every week. As always, we'll see you next week with another great lesson about following Jesus from wherever we are, somewhere out there. Hey.